to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, wi fis Welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And to click the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I upload new content and when I go live. I just went live tonight. And most of y'all must have missed it because you wasn't there. But you can catch the replay. But I don't want you to catch the replay. I want you to be there to interact with me, to tell me what you think about what I say is. Tell me what you think about what we're talking about. Hey, I may even send, put a link in the chat and pull you on up if you're interested in it. So you need to be there. You should be there. I mean, especially if I'm going to come on the camera looking like this. I mean, I did a little something for you all. A little something. But I mean, I, I was here for you. So, you know, click that notification bell so you can be there. For me. This is what we're building as a community. <laughs> all right so i still have my wireless and live up wanted to take a moment out and hopefully this will be a short one hopefully this will be one of them short episodes i've been trying to work on getting my episodes down to 12 or 15 minutes but there are just so many things a woman like me can say mm. Mm. about not taking your mother's dating advice okay we're not going to be able to listen to our moms about this one. And we love them. We love them. They can give us cooking advice, and they should. They can give us marriage advice if they've got a good one, you know. But dating advice, oh. it's like asking my mom how to work apps in an iPhone, okay? If you ask me that, I can't help you. So clearly, my mom's not going to be able to help you download an app and use it correctly in a phone. She's got a flip phone. So there are just certain things that have evolved, that have changed. The technology has changed the dating world in an irrevocable way. And you can't be listening to your mom about dating advice, okay? So I came across this video that I'm going to share with you, and it was a video of a woman berating an 18-year-old girl about having slept with four guys. And of course, it was probably on some male red pill content channel, um, but I'll let you watch it. At 18, there's nothing to be proud about. I'm not proud at all. Right? I'm telling you now. I know. Because when I heard the 15 before 30, that's where it starts from. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, you see your four? Keep it at four to your no, 30. I'm celibate now. I'm no, 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 no. Lord. Keep it at four. Don't be going out and I'll date some winding up the guys. Don't be going out and saying, wow. oh, I'm going to go with you just in case. Right, because if I was a man and I took you out and you're not feeling it, I'm going to feel offended. Especially if you're not going to go out for a, a date to look for, forward to having a, a relationship. So you see, you're four. I want to hear from you that in five years' time, it's still four. Unless you've got a ring on your finger. Uh, in ten years' right. time, that is still four. Mama. Unless you've got a, your finger on your, a ring on your Mama. finger, right? I was, I was and so... take... Don't... Shut up. Mama. Take Mama. advice Mama. from an older woman that four by 18... It's nothing to be talking about. I've never seen anyone be shamed out of doing the wrong thing. As a matter of fact, I've seen people put more shame on doing the right thing than the wrong thing. But I think it's interesting that in a time like this, where you can have food delivered to your house, where you can meet the acquaintance of a thousand people in your city in a day, that we as women are still being held to archaic opinions of body count. And I'm going to tell you why first. I think this is archaic and ridiculous. Because 
even if you are a woman who's only been with one or two men in your lifetime, as if that's not grooming. You as a woman are a receiver. So any man that you interact with, you're not getting just him. You're getting his body count as well. He's bringing with him all the bodies, bodies on bodies on bodies. I keep on piling on bodies on bodies on bodies. That he has taken into his spirit and into his soul to deposit into yours. And when you have very little sexual experience, it can actually be inundating to deal with another man's bodies and sexual energy that he's brought to you. A lot of women think, and I'm just going to be as real as I know how, because I've already been wireless and live for an hour and some change. And I think I broke all the ice off. So we're, we're ready to go now. It's a lot of women that think a man's sex is amazing. When it's really not, it's just his sexual energy. Because as soon as the spell that he put on you is broken, you'd be like, um, was it always this bad? Yeah, a lot of the sexcapades, the, a lot of the sexual energy we think we're getting from these men is just the powered up version, the killmonger version of all the souls that they have actually taken off of other women. Is this your game? Huh? Because as soon as you break your soul tie with them, you start being like, this was pretty basic. But they're coming in the energy of the fifth and sixth and seventh power being whores themselves. Okay. And like I said, that's not to say if you can't beat them, you just join them. I do believe women have to be very, very selective with what they do with their bodies, minds, souls, and their energy. Very selective. But I do think that with experience comes wisdom. You know, the Bible talks about how Adam knew his wife. There's a knowledge of a woman or a man. And it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that tempted men above everything else. That knowledge, the knowing of you that people want to have when they want to have the sex is intoxicating for people. And I think that a lot of people want women to be naive. And that's why they'll ask you things like body count. Because that lets me know what level of experience you have. That lets me know whether or not you're going to think I'm the ultimate male or not. I've never had a man ask me that. I, I, the only men who have asked me that have come across to me as being insecure men. But we've got to be real about the fact that there are groomers out here in the world that are grooming women to be miserable in relationships when that's totally impractical now. That's totally impractical when you look at the Denea Jackson, Derek Jackson situation where you got this woman that's modest in the way that she dressed and, you know, even spoke herself about how she felt about her husband being in these other settings. So she knew, she knew he was having sex with other women. But she still stuck beside him. You know why? Because she was groomed to do that. She was groomed to believe that him being sexually in incontinent was not going to affect her. But when you read her writing, she talked about how those things played out in her mind. Those things came to mind when she was intimate with him because he bringing bodies back. Baby, you don't even know these women. You don't know what kind of energy they own. Now, all of a sudden, you in here spewing something crazy and you don't even know where it came from because he brought, he brought you a renegade rogue soul back from Miami. There's somebody he don't even know. <laughs> and now you got to deal with these like spirits, drawing like spirits. Now you got a like spirit and you drawing some stuff. So I would always encourage women to be cognizant of their body. But not for the purpose of a body count, not for the purpose of, of keeping some type of score for someone else who really is just out there looking for a victim. 
I tell you not to take your mom's advice because unfortunately, a lot of these men that we're dealing with were raised by our moms. I didn't have a brother, but for girls and women who have brothers, they saw the difference in the advice that their brothers were given versus what they were given. The difference in the expectation the brother was given, cut the grass, take out the trash, versus what the daughter was given, cook, clean, wash, take care of your brother. You, baby, they know the disparity. And these were the same women. So you really trust the woman. Even if she is your mom, they could raise that type of man. Like we're dealing with, we're dealing with the fallout from their stuff right now. And what your mom and mammies, women who put themselves in that position to cape for these men, don't seem to understand about the difference between, because it's a weird dichotomy to be in. You have men saying things were better back in the day when women were at home, when women didn't work, when women didn't think they were independent, blah, blah, blah. But then on the flip side of it, when women were at home and they didn't work, where did you find them? You actually had to pick a woman, court a woman, call a woman, take a woman out, pay for the woman, pay all her bills. Like you got to want both. You can't pick and choose. <laughs> you got to be able to do both. But here's the thing. Your mother wasn't in competition with women in Belize. For a man. So when they talked about the things that you should do to keep your man, the things that make your man happy, having unconsensual sex in a marriage because that was your duty, because even though you might have things going on with you and you might have had a bad day, you still cook for your man. You are not there to have your feelings, needs, thoughts, desires, wants catered to. You were born. You exist. You were created. You live. To bring peace, harmony, provision, protection to your man's life. Okay, you are his shield from a cruel, evil, unaccepting world. He comes home to you. But what's crazy is when you listen to the 1971 conversation between James Baldwin and, um, and Nikki Giovanni, you hear her saying that, I hate white people, but I'm afraid of black men. You see this consistent, ongoing dialogue about how men come home and bring their worst behavior to these wives. And these wives were expected to take their husband's worst, wave a magic feminine wand over it and transform it into peace and goodness and happiness for these men who, according to the people that were talking back then at that time, I, I can't speak on it. I wasn't there. But they were. And according to them, you could do all that and he could probably walk out anyway. I mean, with, even without being there, <laughs> we see it right now. You know, we, we see it with the Derrick Jacksons of the world. We see it with the TJ Holmes of the world where you did your thing as a wife and they were like, ah, yeah. I mean, we haven't heard a complaint from any of these men. She doesn't take care of the kids. She doesn't take care of me. She doesn't take care of the house. She wants too much. She nags. She, we haven't heard it. That's not to say it hadn't happened because I know there's some man waiting to get down in my comments, you know, to wet his top off of being able to tell you, you don't know what's going on in nobody else. And you don't know either. All we can go by is what these folks said. And they didn't have a complaint for their wives on the anniversaries. So we ain't going to come up with some stuff to justify some other stuff. We know what they did. We know what did happen. So we got that. And we know what they didn't say. So we got that. But I will say that your mother does not understand. Your mother hasn't been on a dating app. Or maybe she has. But the access that men now have to women has completely changed the game and the same reason why men want women who are inexperienced 
men want women who are dependent, who are submissive and docile. It's the same reason why men want women who are young. Women who have not dealt with trauma. Okay, it's just traumatic being black in America, just period. So how do I negate dealing with a woman who has any type of past trauma, any type of issues, any type of daddy issues? It's to not go to my community and get her. Let me get an Asian woman. Let me get a white woman. The likelihood that they have been untouched by trauma is greater. And therefore, I want them. Okay, I want you. We have to understand that this is a grooming process. And if you listen, I had come across a video that was talking about some writing of Christopher Columbus or something. I don't know. If you read the Willie Lynch papers, if you read all of this paperwork that people left behind from pre-colonial days, that's what they said about the people that they encountered, that these people were friendly, that these people were trusting, that they were kind, so let's take their land. Oh, it would only take 50 of us to come in here and subjugate them and, and take what's theirs and take what they have. No one who actually loves you, who desires to be your equal, to treat you as an equal, needs you to be inferior than them in any way. Whether that be your body count, whether that be the amount of money that you make. Because see, here's the thing we as women know and understand, which is why these relationship dynamics have been so disheartening for us. I might be making more money than you now. But one day I might not be. The same way I don't want you loving me for the amount of money I bring to the table. I don't want to love you for that. I want to build with you. And if building with you makes more sense that I'm at home because the work that you do, the amount of work that you do, your ability to provide for us allows me to be at home and that makes me of the greatest benefit to you, then that's what we do. Even in my derelict, broke down, broke ass first marriage, there came a point over the course of those five, six years where my first ex-husband got a job and he was making more money than me and he was making good money. And the decision was made because we had small children that I should be at home. Now me being me, I didn't feel comfortable not working at all, even though it was an option. I worked from like 12 to six, two to seven. I worked from two to seven weekday mornings uh, dispatching at a little, uh, little local, uh, police station. It was for CMS schools. It was a school police station. And, um, you know, I made a, f a few coins at the end of the week. I had my own money. If there was something that was short in a bill, I could pick it up. You know, that, that just felt more comfortable for me, but it allowed me to be at home during the day with my kids. And I was good at home. Not every woman is good at home. If you want a home woman, you got to pick you a woman that's good at home because not every woman is good at home. And I was good at home for a season because, baby, if you put me at home right now, the food ain't going to be cooked. The socks ain't going to be folded when you get home. It just ain't. I'm going to be done watched as the world turns, reruns, ate some bonbons. I'm just too tired for that now. The, I'm of the greatest use to my family, to my culture, to my man. <laughs> Own somebody's job, a farm, doing some kind of work. That's just where I am in my life. But at that time, I was good at home. We had a menu every week. We had um, like I had a little calendar with a schedule of everybody's time and where everybody had to be. I was super organized. I had this pantry that was super dope. And then the way I would do my menu is like we would have certain food that we ate every day. Like I would cook on this day. I would cook one meal on this day. Then I would cook a different meal on this day. It would be like dinner this day and then I would cook lunch the next day and then we would eat the same dinner on the next day then the next day I would cook the next dinner like I, I had a program for it and then when we got to the end of the week I would go through the refrigerator and everything I didn't touch everything I didn't cook I would go through the pantry and then I would create a new menu based on some of the stuff we already had at the end of the week so that way we wasn't buying all new stuff so it was economic and 
and, and, and it was functional. I mean, I, I had a system, baby. I was on top of it. And that was what he needed in order to be able to work at that level. And then one day he came home and he had lost that job. And that whole way of life for us changed. You don't marry, and this is marriage advice, not dating advice. You don't marry the person that has everything right now. You marry the person that you could be with if they did have everything and if they didn't. Sometimes you marry people when they got everything. and Maybe they lose that job or they lose that limb and you got a whole different creature. That's what these partnerships are supposed to be about. They're supposed to be about learning how to win and who you can win with. Real good quarterbacks know who they need on their team. That's the reason why they kicked Steve Smith off of the Panthers because they had uh, Cam Newton saying, you know, people are following him. People are listening to him. It's destabilizing my leadership. That's why they... You got rid of Shaq when they had Kobe. You got to know who your franchise player is. You got to know what type of team you need to put together to win. I'm not saying that no man needs a submissive woman. Some men really need that in order for them to lead their household. Yeah, you know, that's on them. My man, he ain't going to have that. Yeah, you know, whatever man choose me, we're going to share dominion. We're going to be powerful together. We're going to be a power couple. We're going to be Jay-Z and Beyonce. I got mine too. And that man will be able to lead in concert with me because that's who he is as a man, because he understands that. And that's what he desires. That's what he likes and what he wants. All this blanket. This is how you get a man. I know you're wondering where this topic came from. I was that video, but I was also having a conversation with my mom because I had been dating a guy and she was like, well, what happened to that guy? And she always does. And I was like, you know, we just couldn't see eye to eye on things. And she asked me for an example and I gave her a couple of examples. And she said, see, that's where you're going wrong. See, you're going wrong because you got to make a man feel like he could see that right there. It's manipulative. It's a false pretense. And as soon as I get into a relationship with that man, I'm going to change. Because that's not really who I am. For our moms, the goal was getting a man. It was getting a relationship like you won if you got the man. Because he was going to stay. You know, you talk about women, you know, he was going to stay. Who else was he going to meet? Barbara down the street. Nina at the meal that he worked with. These men didn't have a whole lot of options either. You was probably their best bet. You know, out of what they could have got. But now they can go to Barbados or whatever. Belize or, I don't know, Costa Rica. Like, I don't know. I don't know where they go. I don't know. I just, it's weird. I've been having conversations with me. they be like, you know, in other countries, the women treat us so good. Okay. Okay. But you're not bringing back somebody that's going to help you build generational wealth for your community. You're not you're not building your community with this. I don't have no problem with it. Do whatever you like, whatever makes you happy. The problem is that when it don't make you happy and then you own, you know, uh platforms hollering and yelling about how you got taken you know I mean we anyway I digress so my mom was telling me that she was like see what you got to do is this you got to make a man feel like he can and the man the man the man the man the man the man I said to my mom what about me he doesn't please me he doesn't make me happy he doesn't make me feel heard he doesn't support me he doesn't hear my vision. And then she said, you know what? If you don't feel like he's the right person for you, then you did the right thing. See, we got to get into that teaching place with our moms. Luckily, I got a mom that's cosmopolitan enough that she, you know, she ain't full mammy. She's half mammy. Because my mom been married four times. She ain't going to play that. Okay? Okay. <laughs> 
you know, it's not a woman in my family that hadn't been married multiple times if it if it didn't work out. Either they in a happy marriage, in a functional, supportive, kind marriage, or uh, yeah. I'll see you later. So I'm glad to actually have been raised by generations of women that felt that way. But not everybody has that. There are still some women that are out here running the man is the prize game. I'm not saying a man is not a prize. I'm just saying that a woman is a prize too. And at the same time, especially when I don't know you. If we don't keep demanding that these men bring something to the table, we're going to be no different to them than the 4,556 other women that they could potentially have access to. And the crazy part is they don't even have the type of access that we do. We got way more men on the dating app in our waiting room waiting on us. We got way more men in our DMs than them. And that's what's really making them feel insecure. That's what's really making them ask you dumb ass, stupid ass fuck boy questions like what's your body count maybe what's yours okay so if we're not going to continue to compete with our men for them like baby you going how you gonna put an obstacle in front of me to get something you want out if you want me and you know you want me if you want a good and decent woman they are so easy to find they're so easy to find because they're not out there in the middle of nothing. Nothing. I I lost count on my body count a long time ago, and it ain't been no problem for nobody. It hasn't made me a poor woman. Men who I've taken care of when they were sick, men who I've cooked a meal for, men that I have talked to. I'm going to tell a story. I've been putting a lot of story times in my last couple of videos, and I'm going to tell a quick little story before I get off of here. I used to date this professional athlete, right? And I don't even tell most people where I've been because why do they need to know? Why is it their business? I used to date this professional athlete, and, and men like Kevin Samuels would say they dated him, but you didn't marry him. Maybe I didn't want to. Not everybody wants that lifestyle. But he's a good guy, you know. And something had happened in his career where he wasn't going to be able to play. He had torn some stuff. They was talking about surgery. You know, for those men, they got to figure out how they're going to live their whole life, not knowing how long that's going to be on four to seven years more often than not of a career. And they don't get paid like we think they do. Yeah, they, they make money. They got money. Don't get me wrong, but they got to play. And so he had started to spiral down into a depression. And this is a very relevant thing to say at this point in time, because we've seen, you know, a high profile black man recently take his life. But one night he was playing the piano, had one of them baby grand pianos in the living room. I came downstairs and he had a gun sitting up on the piano. And I'm not going to go too deep into it because I don't like to share people's personal thing you know maybe he'll write a tell all book and then you'll know who it was but um I talked with this person I talked to him until the sun came up and baby I ain't talked to him like you thought I did I had compassion for him but I definitely gave him the business I said how dare you be so entitled as to think this life wouldn't belong to you how dare you be so ungrateful that a gift you were given, that if it's taken away, all of a sudden you feel like your life don't have purpose. This was given to you to give you the opportunity to find out who you are. And this is who you are. Now, you know. Now you can do something about it. Now you can change. Like, I really gave him the business. and We talked, you know, we talked about a lot of things. I was there for him in a dark time. And then when the sun came all the way up, I said, listen, I'm hungry. Let me cook you something to eat. And that's what I did. I cooked him something to eat. And then I went home and changed my phone number. But that's not the point. My point and what I'm saying is, 
The higher up these men get, the more fragile they are. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with male fragility. But just understand that a feminine man makes a masculine woman. Don't judge us for who we have to be. If I hadn't, I I felt so uncomfortable being in that situation because even though me and that person were dating, it, it really wasn't that deep of an intimate relationship. If you've ever dated professional athletes, entertainers, professionals, period, you know how shallow how shallow your relationships with them can be, you know, all about appearances and how people look and how you're received. And I found out early on, I wasn't that girl. I would be at benefits with him talking and, and being interested in the room. He's like, bitch, did anybody tell you to talk? And I had more to me than just body, yaddy, 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 I had more than that. I had a mind. I had a brain and I wanted to be respected and treated for that. So I wasn't going to be that type of woman that could stand beside them. I wasn't going to be the type of woman that was going to see a man destroying his goddamn life and then make him something to eat. That wasn't going to be me. So I quickly came out of that whole professional athlete, entertainer, dating type situation because I was fly enough to do it. Don't get it twisted up in the game. But there's more to those relationships than people think, more than money, more than what meets the eye. Mostly everybody that comes to them comes for super superficial reasons. You know, and I'm not a super superficial person. This video that was supposed to be in 15 minutes is now almost 30. Plus, I got stuff to really say. I think deep thoughts, you know. I need a deep man. It's going to be deep in more ways than one. But this ain't that type of show. My point in what I'm saying is, don't let nobody reduce you down to them numbers. Don't let nobody reduce you down. The, the way that woman talked to that young girl, I wish I had been there because I'm right in the middle. I can bridge that gap. I'll cuss that old lady out. Don't don't make nobody feel no type of way for some stuff that your son doing. Oh, male identified women. Women, being a good woman is something that will naturally happen for you as you grow, as you age, if you choose the right thing for yourself. I promise. But see, you're going to learn to cook because you're going to need to eat better food because you need to take care of your finances and spending $495 on fast food every week is just not going to cut it. You know, you are not going to deal with silly, immature fuckboys because they throw your pH balance life. These are things you're going to learn over time. I got a 17-year-old daughter. And I'm not raising her to be male identified. I'm not raising her with the eye on the prize because I know that she can put that eye within herself and be prize. Don't take your mom's dating advice. Your mom ain't never had to compete with a chick on IG with a BBL. Your mom has no idea what you're going through. Trust your own instincts. You know when you're being gaslit. You know when these dudes are lying when they're full of crap. You know when you're being ghosted. Your mom don't even know what ghosted is. Don't listen to these old-ass ladies trying to tell you how to get a husband. They all on these sites and all this stuff giving you all this dating advice. If anybody could tell you how to get a husband, it would be me. And you notice I ain't done it. And you know why I ain't done it? Because when you get a husband, he might not even be worth what you got. I want you to get you. And if you get you and you take care of you, and you never allow yourself to lose you, then you can get whatever, man. Like they mentioned, y'all like Pookie and Ray Ray's. You can like a Pookie and a Ray Ray when you can get up, pay your own bills, take care of your own kid. They calling you a single mom like like Diddy's uh, new baby mama ain't a single mom. Like all the, every single last one of the Kardashians ain't being done the same way they, they talked about you. When everybody else done been everybody else done been made a baby mama by these folks, but somehow you were supposed to know how to choose better. Because your baby daddy wasn't rich. That's all. That's all you did. He was the same black man, but he wasn't rich. 
and they upset about it. But then you, they'll be the same ones to tell you if you pick a rich man that you need to give other men a chance. You can't be expecting to be with a rich man. Baby, you ain't going to win. You ain't going to win with these folks. You can't win. So don't lose yourself. Okay. A win is still a win. And not losing yourself in this climate of dating and men is a win. So go ahead. If you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead on and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. I got some new members, which I used to do uh, whenever I got new subscribers. I used to like announce their names and all that different stuff, but it's gotten to the point now where I can't see them, but I do see you. I see you new subscribers and I appreciate you. I see you subscribers that fell out. I know you unsubscribe, but you still watching. And I'm going to give you something to look at. In the meantime, y'all can go ahead and clock out for me. You are now. See you in the next one. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound. <laughs>